Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Dell challenges the status quo, questions everything, and empowers you to return to your core beliefs to make your life better. If you're ready to hear the truth and get your roadmap to the lifestyle you really want, the next hour will change your life. And now your host, self-made millionaire, national award-winning investor of the year, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. The Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial future. Financial freedom is probably the better way to say it. And as I sit here today, I just want to share with you that this is a holiday show. This is couple days before Christmas 2020. So I've dated the show there and uh, you'll never be able to listen to it again because now it's dated. It's that ruins shows. You can't use them over and over again, but I'm going to be willing to lose one here because I think it's so important during the holiday to sit back sometimes and just think about success. You know, you're coming up in the end of the year and really Christmas to most people, you know, which has lots of meanings, and I'm not going to try to get into the religious aspect of it or the even the interpersonal aspect of it, which are very, very important parts of Christmas. Don't get me wrong. But to other people, Christmas is the time of counting. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of people this year are suffering. The COVID problem has knocked people out of their jobs, eaten into their savings, if not eliminated them, and put them at risk for all kinds of financial failure. Other people that aren't so deep have just been put into a situation where they're fearful that, you know, we've got to hold back because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. There's just, you just got to, you got to restrain yourself, right? And then you have other people that, um, like nothing's even going on. Some people even don't won't even admit there is such a thing as COVID. They haven't seen it. Nobody they know has died from it. They just think it's a gigantic political cover-up to give everybody, the government, the right to take away our rights, et cetera. Then there's the rich people. The rich people don't care if they get COVID or not get COVID. It doesn't matter. They've got all the best doctors, the best medicine, the best this and that and whatever. And it's not even going to slow them down. You see all the reports of these guys going to these giant parties when they're telling everybody to stay at home. But yet these governors and politicians and senators and everybody are going to these giant parties and spending millions of dollars having a great time because none of the rules mean anything to them. Now, I've just touched with this little limerick here, just about every hatred point you can come to, uh, other than we didn't throw in any racial divide. We could throw some racial stuff in there, too, and say, okay, and then the people that are on the bad side of the racial divide are living even worse. They're having more COVID, right? The They have more cases of COVID, and more people die from the cases of COVID. And, of course, they're harder hit by the loss of jobs and so forth. And so there's even a worse scenario out there. So look at all these people that are going through all this stuff. And then there's the rest of us. And the people that just want to get by, just want to do what they need to do to to get by, to provide for their family, and have a wonderful life. Now, I'm not saying that all those other people that I just mentioned don't want to do that. What I'm saying is they didn't do that because they made choices. And life is about a series of choices. So if you decided that high school education was enough for you, okay, that gave you X number of possible jobs, that X number of possible jobs may have put you in a job that got shut down because it was not considered essential. Of course, you could be a high school dropout and sacking groceries, and uh, you are essential, and you kept your job. So there's a a little bit of... uh, luck to it all. Don't get me wrong. But then there's this, the situation where you look at other people that just have made it. I noticed that this year we've been out looking at houses. My wife's got this new thing. She wants to buy a new house for absolutely no reason at all. I'll get into that later. But we're out looking at houses and expensive houses. And so there's the, the realtors. And I read an article. They sent me an article. I read it. It said that they've sold twice as many multi-million dollar homes this year as they did last year. So while the world is dying and suffering... People are buying larger homes. Why? Interest rates are so super low that if you could have afforded a million-dollar home last year, you could afford a $3 million home this year. If you look at the payment-to-payment ratio with the price and so on and so forth, or at least you could go from 500000 to a million. Um, they're just, it's an amazing thing to see, you know, that there's so much money in this world, and it's spread out so that 
so many people have millions and millions of dollars, and so many other people don't. I love the joke I heard the other day on the radio. A guy says, yeah, my job, how's, how's your job been? He says, it's great. I'm still only a million dollars away from being a millionaire. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's funny, but it just struck me funny. You're working and working and working and working, and where, where are you? Hey, I'm still only a million dollars away from being a millionaire. I digress. So what did I want to talk about today? I'm out last night with some friends at a birthday dinner, and my wife and I and the friends were sitting around and, You could just see why successful people are successful and why unsuccessful people are unsuccessful. And you can see what it takes to create a driving force. Now, it just so happens that in both cases, the family we were with and ourselves, they're both driving forces. But in both cases, there's one person that is a type A and one person that is a type B. And what I would suggest to you is that a type A can destroy your family and a type B can destroy your family. And only through the processing of the balance of type A with type B personalities can you actually become very successful. Now, I know that's not 100% true because I know there are people that have one or the other and have made millions of dollars because they're in the right place, right time, did the right thing. So don't get me wrong. But in general, I've been doing this for 30 years consulting people. In general, I probably talk to a 1,000 people a year. In general... I find that most people fall into one of two categories. I call them type A and type B personalities. And what's different about the two is that basically a type A personality, and I'll pick on type A's first because I'm a type B in general, although I do have a few type A characteristics that wing over to the other side now and then. But a type A personality is someone who has instantaneous, gratificationally diseased ideas. In other words, they want something and they want it now. There's no waiting. There's no let's save up and buy this. Let's buy this somehow. Let's win the lottery. Let's go buy it. Let's put it into debt. Let's buy something on debt. Let's do it now, but i got to have it now. There are many other characteristics to a type A personality. Not only do they have to have what they want right now, no matter what it is they want, they will stop wanting it after a period of time. In other words, to a type A, it's the wanting that gives them the feeling. The owning is brief, just a flash in the dark enjoyment moment. It's like, boom, okay, wow, I did it. Okay. What, you know, let's see about, and can I add to, and, you know, there's a companion to this, and or it's just not big enough, and, you know, that's the way it works. I bought my wife a diamond ring. A year later, she said it wasn't big enough. We lived in a 5,000-square-foot home. She says that wasn't big enough. We moved into a 16,000-square-foot home, 20-car garage. Now she says that's not nice enough. We need a bigger, better, more expensive home for no reason other than she wants something else. It's not even that she wants more. She just wants something else, something better, right? And that's the way type A's are. So what do type A's bring to the family? Type A's bring the drive, the desire, the want to go get something, to get ahead. And type A personalities believe that you've got to be doing multiple things at the same time because if you throw enough mud on the wall, something might stick. So you do everything. You get it all. And ultimately, type A personalities are late to everything because they try to get too many things stuck into an hour or stuck into a day that they will not get it done. They're always late because they're always over addressing issues, over demanding things to get done, over filling their timetable. When we come back, we'll talk more about type A and type B and what it's going to end up meaning for you and your financial situation. We'll be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today, we're talking about personality traits and how they lead people to success or drive them away from success. And we started out with talking about type A personalities, which are those people that have what I call the instantaneous gratification disease. They want something now. They don't want to wait for it. And not only do they want it now, it's not satisfying. Once they get it, it never satiates their need. They want something else immediately afterwards. It's just more, more, more. That's what... 
type A personalities want. They're never satisfied. Never will you see a type A personality go to you, you know, I've really, I've just done it, succeeded. I've done it all. I'm kind of happy where I'm at. I'm just going to take it from there, you know, and enjoy this life. They can't enjoy the life because whatever they have is wrong. It's not right. It's not what they want. Even though it's what they wanted so bad a day, a week, a year ago, now it's not important. It's terrible. In fact, they start tearing it down and looking at all the flaws in what they have in life. They always look at the flaws and always look ahead to what would be better. So what I found to be true with this type A, type B relationship is the type A is always out there making bad financial decisions. Why? Because they move in haste. And if you're a type B personality and you have a type A in your life, you've seen them make hasty financial decision at one after another, after another, after another. Always a great idea at the moment. Never, ever ends up turning into anything. Never goes anywhere. Now, the only thing a type A personality can do is a job. If you give them a job where they can get in there and you want to get something done, give it to a type A to get it done. They'll get something done because they they just go get it done where a B will think it through, analyze it to death, and never take action. But a type A will get the job done. Now, what I found to be true is if you look at relationships where the male and female have to work together as husband and wife, relationships where the wife is the type B personality and the male is the type A is the type of relationship where the husband goes out and does tons of stupid stuff, but the wife pays the bills and she knows that his stupid ideas aren't working. And every time he comes home with another great idea, like, Hey, I just listened to lifestyles. We should go look at it. She goes, come on. We've done every one of the crazy ideas you wanted to check into wholesaling and flipping and stock market and day trading and options and on and on and on. You've tried them all, Bob. Give it up. Stay home. Do not go buy another course, another educational package. Do not go buy more stuff. Now, I have that argument with my wife all the time. Have for 12 years. Please don't buy any more stuff. We've got enough stuff. But no, she'll go buy stuff that duplicates what we already have and throw out what we already have and replace it with something that we already, we don't need. And for example, and I tell this one, this is one of the stories I used to tell in the seminar. I don't tell it anymore, but you know, you go and you buy a big giant house and it's different than having a, like an apartment. You own an apartment and you can put any furniture in there. I had a beanbag chair, I think, in one of mine. And, you know, whatever you could find, you just throw it in. It didn't matter. Then you go to a nice size home and you have a, you know, medium sized two or 3,000 square foot home and you can buy any decent house furniture. You can go over here to the, the furniture store of any kind. You name three of the top ones at Rooms to Go or any of these things where they have these bundles of furniture and you can go buy a room full of furniture, you know, and boom. There you go. It works. Give me the colors, match the colors, pick the bundle, put it in there. You got it. But when you own a mansion, when you own a big, giant house, first of all, the small little pieces of furniture that go in a regular house don't fit. You need giant pieces. And to look right in those rooms, they need to be expensive pieces. Otherwise, you look like an idiot that has a giant house with, you know, almost like doll furniture in it, right? Each corner of the house demands a piece that is perfect for it. And so over a period of time after we moved into the 16,000 square foot home, we acquired those kinds of pieces of furniture where a chair cost 5,000 bucks, a couch cost 10 or 20,000 bucks. Each piece, the you know, the thing that goes up against the wall where you put all your China cam and stuff, but it's not a China cam, it's, a, it's an art niche, whatever, but it's huge, cost 20,000. Everything is expensive and everything has a spot. You buy it for a spot. You don't just buy, go, let's take it home and see if we can find a place. Although my wife tried to buy some stuff, bring it home and try to move it around the house until she found some place with fit. It doesn't work that way with this type of place. You buy it because it fits that. You know it fits there. So what happens? I go away and do a seminar for two days. And when I left, everything went in its perfect spot. When I come back, everything's moved. It's moved into places it doesn't fit. It doesn't make sense. But to her, it was two full days of me not being around that gave her the opportunity to move stuff. Do you understand that? I got up yesterday and looked in the refrigerator. Nothing was there. She had thrown out all the mustard and mayonnaise and, to, and ketchup and this and that. And there was nothing there for me to make a sandwich with. Just threw it away. Oh, it's outdated. Okay. Then the next day I bought food and brought it back to the house and she rearranged the refrigerator as if it was necessary. She's rearranged this refrigerator 
20 times. She's bought cubicle things to slide into it and fit into it and rearranged and reorganized. And all of that's important. But what does the type B do? While she's doing all that, I'm buying grocery stores. I'm buying apartment complexes. I'm buying stuff. Why? Because I have money. Why do I have money? Because I didn't buy all the crap. Because I've saved my whole life. Because I've lived below my means. When I buy something, it makes me money. I don't rebuy the same thing five times. And so as a type B, if you have a type A spouse, it's almost like a full-time job trying to keep them from spending all the money. And it's ungodly. Now, what's a type B? A type B is a guy with analysis paralysis. Type Bs don't like doing things. They don't want to do anything. And there's two reasons we don't want to do anything. Number one, we are happy where we're at. And we don't want to change that. To change is uncomfortable. To try something new is uncomfortable. And the second reason we don't like to do anything is because we get stuck doing it. There's activity involved. Type Bs don't want activity. We, we don't want to go build a new this or do a new that or put together that or drive around and look at this. We want to stay home. We want to relax. We've made it. We've saved our money. We have money. We're successful. We just want to sit around and enjoy it. But the type A's want you to spend it. See, type A's believe that money is like blood. If it's not flowing, it's useless. You're dead. You've got to keep that money flowing. They believe money grows on trees. It just comes and comes and comes and comes and comes. And a type B has to fight that. Otherwise, you'll be broke. We'll be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Wamsley talks about positive cash flow tax-free. I bought one little rent house. So a month later, I bought three more. Now I started receiving even more positive cash flow. $880 a month positive cash flow after just two months. This cash flow was tax-free because of the way I did it. Because if you know how to do it the right way, you won't pay taxes on that. Give yourself a raise tax-free. Find out how at Lifestyles Unlimited's live online free workshop. Register today at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today, we're talking about the difference between type A and type B personalities and what problems are associated with those two personalities. We've spoke about the type A for the last two segments and how the type B interacts with the type A and what the problems are that the type A creates. I found that because I'm a type B, but my largest challenge in life is dealing with type A's because, I mean, they're so diametrically opposed to what I believe to be true in life. But I had to at one time learn how to deal with them because they are the other half of the universe out there. And in many cases, as a business owner, you're going to need some type A's to get some stuff done. You need somebody that's going to get out there and do it. Whereas type B's will get around to it after we analyze it to death. You know, the analysis paralysis problem is really a, it's not so much of a problem that type B's can't make decisions. That's not the truth. I'm a type B. I can make a decision. Problem is they don't want to make a decision. Why? Because making a decision creates a result. It creates an action. It creates an avalanche of new stuff that's going to happen to you. I'm at the point now where I've been buying apartment complexes, houses, and businesses for 30 years. I can make a decision on a business, a multi-million dollar decision in five minutes. No fear, no stress, don't even need a lot of deep due diligence because what I do is before I do anything, I do deep due diligence and I understand it totally before I pull the trigger. But once I've got it and I'm ready to pull the trigger, then I'm a trigger puller, right? Because I found that as an analysis paralysis being that every time you analyze too long, you miss out on stuff. Now, there's another reason why people analyze stuff to death, and that's because you don't want it to happen, right? You always feel like, if I just don't make a decision, then time will take me out of this problem and prove that I was right that I shouldn't have made a decision. So I remember I had an old phone when I was 
younger. And I kept that phone forever. And I saw people start getting these smartphones and had all kinds of smartphones. And finally, one year, I decided to get a smartphone. So I started researching it. As I researched it, I wanted to find out Apple or Android, Apple or Android, that kind of thing, right? And so I researched and talked to people and went online and researched and talked to other people that I knew. And then when finally I said, okay, it looks like Apple's the one to go with. So I started researching Apple and then tried to say, okay, which one of the Apple products do you need? Blah, 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 why? And so forth. And by the time I finally got to where I could make a decision, all the models had changed. And everything was different. Now, Android to come back with something, a better product. Apple to come out with a new product. And I had to start all over again. The process needed to be redone. Then I made a mistake and just bought one. The second I bought one, I found out it was outdated, didn't work, antiquated, and or the first version of anything that comes out doesn't work right. Then I was even more burned as a type B because now I saw I was right. I shouldn't have made a decision. I should have stayed with what worked and not what doesn't work. And to this day now, when it comes to anything electronic, you tell me that this is the first version, I won't buy it. Secondly, when they send you an upgrade on software, I won't upgrade, never. You wait until that software upgrade has been proven, and then I'll upgrade. And only if I know that it's safe and it's been proven, there's not a bunch of glitches and problems with it. So the type B personality is trying to avoid pain. The type A personality is trying to gain pleasure. Type A is running towards things, which means you're running into bullets. You're running into machine gun traps. You're running into problems. Type Bs are retreating from problems. They're avoiding them. They're hiding. They're digging a ditch and burying their head. Well, what is the problem with being a B? The problem with being a B is even though you've saved your money, you were frugal, you did all the right things that you were told to do to be safe and secure, you're never going to be rich never going to be rich. Just doesn't happen unless you're some engineering geek that invents something that makes them millions of dollars as an invention. But you're not going to get rich. Working a nine to five job, saving, putting money in a 401k, that isn't going to happen. And so if you are that satisfied with life and that's where you're at in life and you, you feel that's good enough, then that's what you end up with. And for a type A, you would drive them batty. Now, I provide mega millions of dollars of homes and cars and enjoyment and stuff to my wife. Still, she just gets as depressed as you could ever see anybody. That is just not enough. She's fighting with our friends. You should be on my side. That you should be against Dell and tell him he needs to buy this stuff. It's amazing. And she enlists people to try to get me to do stuff. Like I went around buy Christmas presents. And, of course, I get a list from everybody. It's like you do. And I was driving around because you can't take her with you when you shop, right? It's impossible. Whatever she wants to buy, she wants 12 of them. I remember one time she showed me four things. It was that one there and that one there and that one there. Each one of them was like 7000 7000 7000 And I go, Whew, man, those are expensive. Okay, which one do you like best? Oh, they all go together. I'm like, what? They all go together? Yeah, they all go together. I flipped out. So the only thing you could do if you're a type B is because she was going to have a fit right there. She's losing it. So I bought all three of them, but I gave her one for Christmas, one for her birthday, and one for Thanksgiving or Valentine's Day, I think. But she had to have all of them. It just wasn't good enough to pick one of them. That's a type A personality. That's what you're up against. So you can't take them shopping with you. So what happens now? I went shopping this time, and uh, <laughs> every store I went into, people came up to me and go, Dell. Del Wamsley, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, your wife called. My wife called, yeah. I said, what did my wife call about? Well, she gave me a list of what she wants. (laughs) She had cornered me at every store by calling ahead and telling people what she wanted. Everybody knew her. I mean, she'd been in there shopping and pre-shopping. She does a thing like called pre-shopping. She pre-shops, finds out everything she wants. Buys half of it herself just because she can't stand to come home without taking something home with her. And then the most expensive things that she doesn't want to spend her money on, then she'll put them on the pre-shop list so that I can go shop and find them. Now, if you've ever been a type B living with a type A, you understand what I'm talking about. It's a constant battle to not want to spend more money. But as a type B, I have to say this. I'm living in a 16,000 square foot home with a 20 car garage. I'm very satisfied. But I didn't want to buy it. She drove me to buy this house. She beat me up. Man, made me look at it, made me look at hundreds of houses. And the only reason I bought this house is because I bought it for half of what it was worth. Guy built it brand new, got divorced, lost everything he owned. His wife took everything and he sold the house for pretty much what he owed on it, about 50 cents on the dollar. And, or maybe more, maybe 60 cents on the dollar, something like that. But the bottom line was I was willing to do it because I got a steal. I go, man, I've never bought a home to live in that I made money on. I bought other houses to make money on 
And I bought other homes to live in, and I've always believed you buy a home, it's a waste of money, it's consumption. But in this house, I actually am living in an investment and enjoying it as consumption, but bought it as investment. Wow, what a great two-way story that is, right? I don't want to leave this house. I'm sitting on top of a gold mine here. And yet she wants me to go pay full price for somebody else's house is trying to sell it on the open market at full price. Now, what she probably realizes in the back of her head is that she's got to keep taking me around, taking me around, taking me around until she finds somebody who's willing to take a low ball offer, who's hurting. And when you can bring the energy and, and the enthusiasm that a type A brings to the search process, that a type B has no energy for it all. I have no energy to search hard for something that I don't even need. Remember, I don't need to move out of a 16,000 square foot home with a 20 car garage. There's no need. My pool in the backyard is the nicest yard anywhere. You, you won't find us. You won't find a hotel with a better backyard than mine. So I'm telling you that not to to brag and impress you. I'm, I'm just trying to impress upon you. There's no reason for me to move. There's no other better place to go. Yet she's showing me stuff that's two and three and four times more expensive than what we live in. And I'm going, why? And what's even funny is she found one house that's really nice, beautiful, has the type of interiors that she likes, is 10,000 square feet, not quite as large, but only has a three-car garage. Her answer, we can build a 20-car garage in the backyard. And I'm going, honey, this is a very expensive subdivision. They don't let you just build a building in the backyard. There are rules and regulations and et cetera, et cetera. And besides that, who wants to go pay? double what we paid on this house, have a smaller house, and then spend another million to build a garage. We'll be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show. My friends, how many of you out there right now believe you have a plan? I followed the conventional plan for years, and then the conventional plan blew up in my face. I wonder how many of you can relate to that exact same thing. The real question is how many of you have actually figured out how to turn that thing around and make it happen. Do you have a plan? Lifestyles Unlimited has one for you. It's worked for countless others. Retire in five years or less. Come learn more. Join us for our live online workshop. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Welcome back. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today, we're talking about the pros and cons of being a type A personality, a type B personality. In this last segment, I'd like to talk about the best of both worlds. And the best of both worlds is where you, yourself, and or your spouse can figure out a plan to mesh your two strengths, whatever they are. I had one family come to me and go, we're both type A personalities. And I go, you guys are going to kill each other. He said, oh, yeah, we're broke. We're broke and we're way in debt. Every time we get a dime between the two of us, we spend it every second, every penny we get. That's what type A's do. I found other type B's to go, two type B's together. And I've dated type B's before, and this is the way it works. So um, would you like to do something tonight? Yeah, sure. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't care. Well, should we go out to a movie? Sure, that's a good idea. What would you like to see? I don't know. What about you? What would you like to see? I don't know. How about this one? Nah, that doesn't really fit what I'd like to see. Okay, well, what about this one? How about that one? No, I'm not really interested in that kind of thing. Okay, well, then maybe dinner. Would you like to go out for dinner? Sure. Where do you want to go? I don't care. How about this place? Uh, probably not. Okay, well, then what about this place? Mm, eh, maybe, okay. But, uh, nah, nah. Well, if you don't want to go out to dinner, you know, is there something you'd really like to do? Well, no, maybe. Would you like to go out dancing? Well, I don't know, not tonight. You know, uh, blah, 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 blah. It's just you end up doing nothing. That's what two Bs are like. So, obviously, two B's together are going to have a miserable life. Two A's together are going to have a miserable life. So, it's really the need to find that A-B combination that works. And the couple we were out with last night, that's exactly what it is. The wife's a B and the husband's an A. And the husband's just a lunatic. He'll spend money on anything, anywhere, anytime, yet he makes money. She's very frugal, yet 
she'll spend money. And what happens is, and what I've learned by being around them, is that there's a balance to their frugality and or their spendability. And they have that balance figured out and they know where it's at and they know how to figure out what works. And so when I decided to get married, I had to figure out that balance. How much money can I let her spend? And I kind of had to work it out, you know, like, okay, I know what I make. How much can I let her spend? And then as she wanted to spend more and more and more, I had to buy more and more and more companies because I needed more companies because I couldn't allow the amount of money that I saved each month to change. I can't allow the liquidity that I need to feel comfortable in life to change. So when she wants more, I have to buy more businesses. And so I did that. And what's hard for her, almost impossible for her to understand, and I don't know if understand's the right word for it, she doesn't care. What's impossible for her to care is that every time she wants more, I need the money to buy businesses to take care of her wanting more. Now, here's the reality. When you talk about, we looked at houses anywhere from 3.7 million that needed another half a million built onto it to build a garage. So we're talking about four and a half million bucks. And we're talking all the way up to $12 million we looked at. So each million dollars when I buy almost any kind of business produces a 10% return. That's just basic business. That's minimum. So 10% on a million dollars is $100,000 a year divided by 12 months. That's $83,000 a month. I bought business in November and I bought another business in December. I'll close on both of them in January. And each one of these two businesses will produce about nine or $10,000 a month each. So what I'm saying is if you go buy a $6 million house, we're giving up $600,000 a year, $50,000 a month in income. And you're throwing it away. You're throwing it out the door to live in a bigger house. Could you look me in the face and tell me, Dell, I don't really want $50,000 a month more income. I just want a bigger house. And that's what your spouse is doing when they tell you pay off the home. When you get out there and you pay off your home for whatever it is, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500,000, remember, you can borrow up to 80% on any investment. So if you have $400,000 to invest, you can go out there and borrow another 800 and buy a $1.2 million business. But you have to take the 400,000 out of the house to do it. You can't leave it in the house. And if you don't do that, if you pay cash, that money is just debt equity is sitting there. A house is a waste of your money. It's debt equity. Anytime you put money into a house, you need to think about it as throwing the money away. The house may go down in value by 50%. It's done that two or three times in my lifetime, right? So the house is not an investment. You've got to get that through your brain. A house is consumption. A car is consumption. Gas, electric, and water is consumption. They're used up, thrown away, and wasted. But an investment keeps on producing. And if done correctly, not only will it produce, it will produce a lot. It will produce tax-free income if done with real estate, and it will appreciate in value over a period of time. Say, well, my house will. Maybe and maybe it won't. I've sold like four houses I've lived in my entire life. Never made a dime on any of the ones I bought to live in. Now, this one I probably will because we bought it at such a steep discount, but you have to understand that. So if I get rid of this one and make a little money on it by selling it for a little more than what I bought for, whatever it is, and I take that money and stick it in the next house, I'm now even. That gain I made disappeared. It's gone. It's stuck in the next house. There is no gain. Not to mention the property taxes go up double what my property taxes are. So let's throw another uh, 60, make it 120 grand a year away just for the property taxes. So my friends, you should understand from this conversation why I see the type A personalities will drive you broke or type B personalities will keep you poor. The answer, teach yourself to be both. And maybe tomorrow when we come back for the show, I can explain how I turn myself into a mixture of the two. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station, its affiliates, its management, or advertisers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.